This video will teach you more about maintaining your diesel truck and not screwing it up and coming to see me for a motor than anything else I've ever put out there, I think. Good morning, everybody. I have got a really special treat. I get to look at a brand new truck with a good friend of mine, Glenn. We've known each other now for 15 years. About that, yeah. Moved into the neighborhood, great neighbor. Cornered me in church, like people do about their vehicles, and he said, hey man, I get this new truck. He's got a lot of questions. He wants to maintain this truck because he follows me, and he's a little nervous about not maintaining this thing right, and you know, he, he, didn't, want to, he didn't want to come here for an engine in five years. I don't want to come back for that, no. <laughs> what we're gonna do today is we're gonna try to educate him. This is your first, is it first I've diesel? never owned a truck, nor have I ever had a diesel engine, so yeah. lots to learn. Yeah, because I'm assuming you're going to keep this thing. You don't want to trade this in in three years. You want to just yeah. drive the wheels off of it. Correct. Like as long as you can possibly get. Exactly. All right, let's go check this bad boy out. Oh, I like the color. Yeah, oh, it's good. look at this. Brand new glacier gray, I think. They Jeez, dude. New color for the year. <laughs> Little man in a big truck, Dave. My friends were already teasing me. Well, who lifted it? Because this didn't come factory. Uh, like. some Ken Garf did something with it. Did I'm not they? sure who they sent it to. Wow. They didn't, do it. they didn't do it there, though. They sent it out. Look at these wheels, dude. You like them? But, you know, I'm going to Colorado all the time. i got to pull a big Oh! Oh, Michelle, his wife has got to love this thing. I mean, come <laughs> on. It this even has a massage feature. You know, you push the button, it'll give you the massage. This is what you're getting, everybody. Yeah. You got to drop that coin, but man, you can get yourself a sweet truck, and that's the whole point. People ask me all the time, I'll just go ahead and cough it up right now, which is my favorite truck. It's a Ford chassis with a Cummins in it. Can't get the Cummins till, till you go up to a 750, which is a ridiculously big truck to drive, you know, just because you want one. But this is so sweet, man. Wow. Give me a question. Let's go look so, at the engine. I want to see the biggest the question I have is not having had a diesel. For example, I open up this and I see there's a uh, blue oh, yeah. thing for death. It's like, what the heck? The first thing I'm going to tell you about this is don't spill it. It is corrosive, okay. you know? So you don't want to spill it anywhere. Right. And if you do, rinse it off really good quick. Is there a difference in quality? I've seen some of the filling stations have it. Others don't, and you have to buy it in a two and a half gallon container. Good question. I'm not a chemist, so the honest answer to that is I have no clue. Okay. Just with respect to diesel, you know, obviously driving my cars, there's a difference in the fuel that you buy. Uh -huh. Is there a difference in the quality of diesel? And if so, I've been reading a lot about additives and things that you should add to that to get better octane performance, longevity. Keep okay, so clean. these questions, it's like um, the pressure is on. <laughs> okay, the first question, different qualities of fuel, absolutely. And this is the first thing I'll say, fuel is the enemy to your oil. You got to learn that right off the bat, especially with a diesel. Fuel is the enemy to your oil. And in a diesel, the fuel is being directed under high pressure, 30,000 PSI, through an injector. You think of it like a sprinkler head in your yard, but at 30,000 PSI, and it's going somewhere. And where it goes, is on the side of the cylinder wall and then it washes down on the rings and then some of it gets eventually into the oil and that's why i mean it's the enemy to the oil it degrades the lubricity and and the uh, cleanliness of the oil okay quality of your fuel is more important in diesel than any other vehicle i wanted to say something about this make sure you you know you never want to contaminate the diesel you know if you ever put gasoline in this truck mm. the best thing you'd ever do is don't cycle the key do not turn it on because then all we have to do is drop the tank and flush it you run gasoline through this system this high pressure system and you'll wipe it out so do not contaminate your fuel source. You know, I do a lot of fishing and, I, and I'm, I'm talking to captains, you know, and these boats, you know, got quarter of a million dollar diesel motors in them and two of them. Yeah. They're fuel polishers and they call them fuel polishers, a filtration system. You know, they'll spend 50,000 bucks on a fuel polisher. Wow. So that their fuel going into those engines is pristine because they're, they're getting that fuel at a dock in San Juan, Puerto Rico. You know, I mean, they're, you know, down in the Caribbean, down in Mexico. And so the quality of the fuel is always questionable. You know, obviously when I fill up a car, I can see there's 87 octane or 89 octane, 91 right. octane, but diesels, I haven't seen that. All no. I've seen, I've only filled it up once, but the only it appears that there is uh, just diesel. I, I, uh, I did a video and it was with uh, Lake Speed Jr. And he is an oil, I mean, he's the guy, uh, he helped formulate it, uh, Joe Gibbs Racing yeah. Oil and all that other stuff. He goes to the refineries and he knows that every refinery uh, blends diesel totally different. 
Wow. They use different bases. Now, you know, again, I'm not the scientist on this. I just, you know, understand diesel fuel is different everywhere. Your fuel system is not only the thing that makes this thing run so well, but it's the thing that'll take this thing down. Okay. One is for a system cleaner every 5,000 miles. That one is every time you fill up a couple ounces yeah. per gallon. You know, if this was my diesel truck and like my tow truck, I do do uh, fuel additives. You I do. do. Okay. The hardest thing to keep on a diesel is the injectors pristinely clean. Okay. A diesel injector is like, uh, just think of it as a, a sprinkler head in your yard. You know, what's an indication that the sprinkler head isn't like the pattern's not good anymore. You have brown spots of grass in places. You know, the, the water's coming out, but it's not squirting right there. And in a combustion chamber, when that's happening, is that's leaving unburned fuel because fuel, it needs to atomize. It needs to turn into a very fine particular a mist. And, and if you got like, it's doing that instead of like, like a vapor, it starts hitting the cylinder wall, washing down the cylinder wall, degrading your, your oil. And that causes incomplete combustion. I should add that to it. So when you don't have that atomization of fuel, where it just turns into like a cloud, a mist, a fog, you lose power, your fuel economy goes down, and you start building a lot of soot, okay. a lot of particulate. And, and that is basically unburnt fuel. You know, when you see these old diesel trucks, you know, going down the road, there's billowing black smoke. Yeah. And, the, and the boys love to do it. I say to boys, you know, I'd tell them, I'd say, you're just wasting fuel and you're ruining your engine. You know, if you really want to get the most horsepower or something, you want as much complete combustion as you possibly can get. And so when you have complete combustion, it means basically all the fuel is expended in, in the operation of that combustion. It's not wasted. And so you want to keep your fuel atomizing. The fuel additives are the best way to do that, getting good fuel. I recommend that you would change your fuel filters every 15,000 miles. It is that important. I know some people go, well, that's a lot. I know this is a lot of talking, everybody, but it's a serious question, you know, because these trucks are 100, 120 grand, you know, all, all decked out. And the weakest point in them is the most expensive item in them. Yeah. And it's the engine. Now, when that fuel does, starts not to burn good, you get a lot of soot. And soot is uh, unburnt fuel, that black smoke in a diesel. Well, in your diesel, they have a huge scrubbing system to clean the exhaust before it comes out the tailpipe. And it is from the back of your motor to the exit of your car, that scrubbing system, which is a SCR, uh, a DPF, a CAT, you know, all that stuff, I would guess that it, to replacement cost, is 10 grand. Wow. Yeah. And people steal them. Not, 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 in, not in this area, but I mean, they'll cut it, you know, get, lay under a truck with a sawzall and cut them off. Wow. And you'll go out one morning and all of a sudden your truck's real loud. You look under it, it's gone. You know, that's another thing. It's very expensive because they have rare earth metals in those things. And that's how the catalyst reacts with the soot and everything. And then it burns off. That's what your death fluid is for. It injects that and it helps that reaction to happen in the exhaust stream. There is better ways to lower emissions. I believe, and some of them have been developed, like a speed of air piston, that technology. But with this scrubbing system for your exhaust, what you want to do is you want to avoid overwhelming it. You get too much unburnt fuel in there. I mean, it's, it's built to handle a minimal amount of that, but dirty injectors causes the black soot. The black soot then overwhelms the scrubbing system, this cleaning, exhaust cleaning system. And you also have here comes the ugly thing that I do really hate on diesels, the EGR. It's an acronym, it means uh, exhaust gas recirculation. Am I got you asleep yet? Nope, not yet. This is the truth about stuff, so I'm, I'm hoping I'm explaining this well to everybody. NOx, nitrous oxides are the real problem. That's the real nasty pollution that causes burnt lungs and it's not good stuff. In order to, to reduce NOx, we circulate our exhaust gases. Everybody had to put EGR on diesel trucks. Okay. And that's where the, the, the diesel, you could see the longevity of a diesel motor went off a cliff. Now, given this is a brand new vehicle, how long do you anticipate before I would ever have that kind of buildup that it becomes a worry and how it, would I know? It is, it is so uh, indicative of how you maintain the vehicle. And when I say maintain, it would be your oil changes, how long you idle it. Idling the diesel for a long time with an exhaust gas recirculation on it is it kills them. They're not designed to just idle, you know, they're designed to work. Yeah. I recommend no more than 5,000 miles, but I would change oil full synthetic and a good filter every three to 3,500 miles. Okay. However, 
there is a better way to do that. Oil sampling. You have a driving style, most people do, that is pretty the same. You, you know, you get in your truck, you go to church, you go to work during the week, you know, you run to the grocery store, you haul in a boat up to the lake once or twice a month, you know, so, so your patterns are basically the same. Let's do an oil sample on your truck at 5,000 miles. Okay. Let's get a baseline and say, and, and we'll send it out for testing, it'll come back with all these uh, results, and it'll say, you know, I've got sulfur buildup, so build it, or I don't. And we'll take a little oil sample, we'll send it in, it takes 48 hours, we'll get that sample, the results back, and we'll say, your oil is as good as it was the day it went in. Mm. And I can know that. Yeah. And I say, we don't have to do an oil change. Your driving habits haven't changed that. Let's, now, let's recheck it at seven. And then we'll check the degradation and stuff and make a determination of that. Yeah, and then you could really understand how often okay. you need to properly change your oil. It's easy to do, and they, it comes to the thing to draw oil out of the dipstick tube. And okay. it's really quite easy. They just need a, a test tube of it, yeah. a little plastic bottle. They send you a whole kit. You wrap it up, you send it back, you know, it's, it's, it. it's so easy. And we'll leave a link on the bottom of this for uh, Lake Speed's got a great company that does that. Perfect. And he's so well known in the industry. I mean, he's such a great guy. You got a lot of fluids in that car. You got cooling system, you know, antifreeze. You got hydraulic fluid in uh, the power steering system. You got uh, hydraulic fluid in your transmission system. And you got coolers that are cooling that off. So the pi there's piping between all these units running to the front of the truck where the radiator is. You'll look in the front of that truck. And I mean, there's, a, there's all these different coolers. They look like little radiators. Right. And you're running fluid through that to cool it off. So you want to flush all that out. No more, if you're towing, no more than 30,000 miles. I just say that's the way to do it. Yeah. You know? And uh, 50,000 if you're just kind of like daily driving the thing, you know? You mentioned towing. Is there anything I should be uh, careful of doing or not doing when I'm towing? Obviously, this thing's a beast. It's made to tow, yeah. and I've got some things. Do you have an EGR uh, on the dash? Can you read the exhaust gas temperatures on that? Does it I have believe it? it does. It has diesel measurements. Yeah, and this is what you should know as a new diesel owner, that you never want to get your exhaust gas temperatures over 1,350 degrees Okay. for more than a minute. You know, you might be just coming over the top of parties, you know, and all of a sudden it'll crest at 1350 or something like that. You know, just back out of it a little bit instead of, you know, saying I'm barreling over this thing at 85 because I can. Just back <laughs> out of it a little bit. You okay. see your EG, EGTs, exhaust gas temperatures, decrease. Okay. That is the best insurance policy you can have that you'll never burn that thing down. Right. Now, you, will, you don't want to burn down a diesel, I can show you, it'll burn a hole, it's like an acetylene torch, you know, like a blowtorch. You burn a diesel down and it looks like you took a blowtorch right to the side of the piston, burns right through the hole of the wall. Wow. It's a mess. Yeah. You know, I tell people all the time, it's on one of my t-shirts, it says, do your maintenance, damn it, I'm busy. <laughs> Yeah. Good advice. Because if, if, if an engine builder is telling you how to not get your engine done, that's the guy you probably want to listen to. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm not doing all the That's why here. I came in this I, morning. I, know. I yeah. knew you'd set me straight and put me on the right track. I've always said you ought to have a, a good mechanic look at your vehicle at least once a year, once every 18 months. And just, you know. If only I knew a good mechanic, Dave. I know. <laughs> It's hard. Uh, it's hard to find, you know. It's hard. You find a good maintenance shop, you know, that can do that maintenance for you. Right. And uh, you feel confident that they do it properly. Gosh, anything else? We covered a lot. We covered a lot. I'm sure there's going to be more uh, as I yeah. start to get into it and drive it. Gosh. I'm leaving Thursday for a 500-mile trip and back. So Cool. We'll get a chance to tow the trailer, see how it performs out uh, on the way to Colorado. You know, I know this was boring but this is probably one of the i can't remember when i explained in detail how to take care of your diesel truck more than in this one glad to be the recipient of it man thanks Peace. now i know you just got done with the test drive of a mclaren dave yes brace yourself because yes. this might top that yes I know that. I know that sure is a nice truck dude it's really pretty in it.